This episode of DOD TV is brought to you by the new specially designed, lightweight and durable Tenzing Hangtime Day Pack. Go further, hunt longer, Tenzing. Here we go, deer season 22, episode 30. Uh, how did we get here so fast? Late November, early December, we're getting deer that are getting back on food and we've got a story to share with you about a deer that went MIA, missing in action. How often do you have those deer where you've got a lot of pictures of them and then all of a sudden they disappear? And in your mind, it always goes to the worst. Did a neighbor kill them? Did they disperse? Did they get hit by a car? Did they get EHD? Uh, did they get locked with another buck? You never think, oh, well, he's about to show back up. Well, here's a story where that's exactly what happened. So if you followed along with deer season 21 or deer season 22, you may have seen this particular farm uh, as we set the stage of where this occurred in prior episodes. This is a 50 acre farm um, back in the spring of 20, went in there, uh, had a lot of different things I thought we could do in order to improve the farm. We did that. And then we decided to hunt it based on mine and Wade's thoughts on where the food plot should go. We created a bean field or carved out a bean field and then we put this green field in and we were like first first place to shade. We had never sat and watched the deer movement before so all this was just a, a best guess based on experience and what we didn't take into consideration was topography and leaves in the trees because we sat up a green field and put a, an omega lift system in so we didn't go with a permanent blind we wanted to see how the movement was and we got ready to see how the movement would be that year. Pictures were great. Deer walking right in front of the blind. And then we go and sit the blind and uh, didn't exactly go down the way we'd hoped. I mean, it'll eventually get a permanent year. Once we prove this is the right place. Of course, late season, you gotta be up there, I'd say. The kicker bug. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh my. Wow. So Wade and I go in, again, pictures are great, the farm is impressing us, but we go sit there and we have the deer come out and turn around and run back in two or three different times. And what was occurring, number one, what should have been on a map, Northwest Wind working perfect, was curling over the topography right in front of us, and then also to the west of us, those trees with the leaves on it. So we were like, this is, may not be the best position for this particular blind. We sat there a couple more times, had similar results, and we were glad that we went in initially with an Omega lift system so that we could eventually try a different spot. We did that with much better results. So our Omega lifts, we have uh, muddies on top of them. And, you know, we do set control, we wear set lock, but still and yet, you're not gonna fool their nose 100% of the time. We keep the windows closed, we do everything we can to minimize our scent. But if the wind's strong enough, they're going to get you. So what we had to do was find a new position, change the greenfield architecture the following year, take the muddy bull on that Omega lift system, put it dead center on top of this ridge where the wind was consistent. That's exactly what we did. We changed the green field and uh, eventually it paid off big dividends. I mean, we had a fantastic fall once we changed where the food plot was. We did some additional TSI. We moved that muddy bull over there and uh, we had great results because we could hunt it on a west to northwest, even a southwest and uh, we really didn't have any issues with deer winding us that year because we had a consistent wind flow up on top of that ridge. We didn't have to worry about the leaves in the trees or the topography, and uh, it worked out great to put that muddy there. So we had success the fall of 21. Then going into 22, we decided to put something permanent there. We go with an, a hawk office blind. Um, we're, we're like, all right, this is the spot. We go in with a permanent blind, put the hawk up, put the green field in the exact same place. This year, we're just perfecting it just a touch. New hawk blonde right there. And uh, we've got some good, good up and comers that were here last year that should be some big shooters this year. One in particular being a big nine pointer. 
and uh, he should be a special mature deer on the hit list and I can't wait to see him on the Reconyx cameras. We're fairly confident that this is the right blind in the right position. It's got metal sides, scent profiles way down on the inside. It's got big windows. We just like the position. We like the farm. We're like, it deserves a full-time blind and no better option than that hawk office. So going into summer of 22, we are excited to see one particular deer. We had a great history with him the previous year. We felt like this deer's age was four and a half. I actually had discussions about this deer with, with a neighbor to the north, and we both said, hey, great deer to pass. Let's see what he turns into. Well, summer of 22 comes around and boom, he has blown exactly what we hoped. They don't always do this, but he went into the summer and he put on 30 inches plus, just a giant mainframe nine point here in the state of Iowa that uh, we couldn't wait to see what unfolded once the season got here. Get ahead of your game with a 14 day deer cast prediction, mapping, radar, wind check, rain station, path tracking, and more. Prep, predict, and pursue with deer cast. We keep the reconics cameras rolling throughout the fall, but once that summer survey's over and they lose their velvet, then all of a sudden it's up to scrapes, trails, that type of stuff, and it's much tougher to keep track of any individual deer. Well, as the velvet comes off, the brain cells develop. My saying for my buddy out in Montana, Jerry Shively. And this particular buck, while he was a homeboy in 21, 22 proved to be greatly different, vastly different. All of a sudden, all these summer pictures, here's this giant, we have plans to go in there, you know, the hawk's in the right place, the food plot's in the similar place, and then all of a sudden the deer vanishes. And I'm like, wow, did he disperse? Same set of questions, you know, did he disperse? Did he get killed? Did he get EHD? And as dry as we were, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking he could have gotten EHD. So I keep the Reconyx cameras rolling and I, I, I depend so much both on my cell Reconyx and my normal Reconyx to try and get pictures of these deer. Uh, you know, the saying, see what you've been missing. Well, see what you haven't been missing as well. They literally don't miss in terms of when they're going to trigger. I had a cell cam on that farm a Reconyx cell, and I really wasn't getting him on that particular spot. But I had another Reconyx that I went in and checked just to make sure. And what do you know, I have a few pictures of him scattered throughout. And I'm like, hmm, uh, this deer's not off the radar. He's still alive, he's still a giant, but he's just not on the farm as much. And that had me scratching my head. Bean plot looked pretty decent. Greenfield, while it needed more rain, it still was there. and. Um, he went from four to five, changed his habits, in my opinion. And then all of a sudden, I start getting him pretty consistently in late November. Well, this changes the game a little bit. You know, he's back on food, and I'm like, all right, in my mind, I'm like, he just disappeared and went rutted somewhere else this year. They'll do that from time to time, especially as they age. You never know what structure or herd dynamic you're dealing with. Perhaps some other deer bullied him out. And, and then I got a picture where I saw that front leg all swollen. And I was like, oh, he's got an injury of some sort. Then I got another picture where it showed his shoulder. Literally, you could see the, the shoulder bone through his hide with literally no muscle structure in and around that shoulder. And I'm like, what's going on with this deer? So we shifted our focus to that deer. We felt like he was on there for the food and Perry and I couldn't wait to go in there to see if we could lay eyes on this giant. Well, here we go. Back in our daily ritual in the truck interview talk about what we're gonna do tonight. We got uh, an awfully good front that hit today. Myself and Perry are gonna head to a farm that's a small farm. Last year, we had really good luck on this farm. We are in Green Revisited, so this is our first sit within Green Revisited, and we're hoping that we can see one of two different deer coming out to this bean field and then a green field right in front of us. This phase is all about those bucks that have been winding down and at the tail end of the rut. You still see some of that rut activity, but you also see some of those bucks that are coming back to green. They may be coming back for to green just to regenerate. Uh, it's also some of the last green available, so you get a lot of that. And you also start to see a few injuries start to pop up amongst the herd. They get injured in fighting, they get an infection in their leg, they get a variety of different things that can put them back on food this time of year and uh, makes them very susceptible when you're in their boat hunting. So we'll see what we run into tonight, but uh, we're hopeful to have a good night with the weather conditions we have. I believe it's, that's who it is. The eight. That mature skinny, yeah. yeah. Dang, because that's the bed you don't want to clear. Wow, 
that's a good start. 3.35 and they're already moving. And I have to tell them ourselves just a little bit. We got here about 2.30, 2.40, and there were already four deer on this field. So we had to get back, go back to the truck, ease up a little bit, and let them visualize the truck. Then they, they went back into that timber. So it'll be an in interesting to see how far they went and whether they come back out tonight or not. So we felt like it was better than letting them visualize us. So we just did it real slow because we're parked in a pasture. There's cattle all over, all over the pasture. The farmer checks those cattle all the time. So we felt like they'd be more used to that than two hunters walking in, spooking them off. So we'll see what happens. But they ran in right where he just came out. So that's, that's a decent sign. It didn't domino everything out. No, I don't know that deer. Do you? No. See that? I mean, literally food plot architecture to a T. He's gonna walk on through, but they fed on the beans for quite a while. Then they all ended up on this top right here in the green, all of them within bow range. They're all looking. I think he's four and a half. I would agree. Sit. I mean, this is just awesome, and we run a lot of trail cameras, and I don't think we recognize any of the three racked bucks we've seen here tonight, which is testament to this time of the year, the food source, the methods we, tr we try to use, good cover, especially cover that's kind of south facing to it, which there's several humps in here we've done TSI work on, and I mean, the food is drawing them in. Another buck behind him. Deer behind has got some age, but it looks. Is that the, the short ten? That's awesome. Really awesome. Some new deer. Yeah, new deer. No, that's our boy. It's like he's got a fraud or something. Yeah, he's got that big old thing on his knee. Yeah. Well, we're finishing up our set here, and we saw our number one target. He just walked out, but he's too far, and we got two minutes of legal left, so it's not going to be tonight, which means we're also going to have to sit here for a while in the dark before we get out. But he's even bigger in person than he is in the photographs. Wow. And we saw on the photos, like, his leg looks swole up, and you can tell there he's limping and favoring it quite a bit. So, now that he's on the food, maybe he'll stay here. We'll find out. We'll see. That sucker's big. Yes, sir. One thing's for sure, if he comes out tonight hopefully earlier to where he can actually get within bow range i want to make sure that i make the shot you can see these morel targets this one's been here a couple years that one's been here three years that one's been here four years and they stay out all year long but we just pound them myself josh carson perry wade taylor I mean, they, they take a beating. And me personally, I like to shoot broadheads into them just because it replicates exactly what I'm gonna shoot. But them little targets get cut up left and right and they just keep on, they just keep on taking it. I'm gonna take a couple more shots and then head out. I think you get it in the latter part of the season. It's easy to get lazy and go, oh, I'm shooting fine. but. It's just like batting practice for a baseball player in September. It's just as important as it is in April. And you got to make sure your form's there and you're shooting correctly and just gives you the confidence to make it happen. I'm going to take one last shot and then Perry and I are going to go.
Perry pulling in now. Wade's here already. Like usual, beats Perry here. And uh, Perry's late for work. There he is. <laughs> see, see what I deal with on a daily basis? So Wade's gonna go to Missouri tonight. He's after a big 10 down there. Perry and I are gonna go jump in after that same deer. All right, well, I'm glad you finally decided to come, Perry. Wade was here on time and you're late again. <laughs> What's that? A cookie Tracy brought me. You want half of it? No, sir. Good. Because <laughs> I want both halves. <laughs> here we go. What a beautiful sunny day here in Southern Iowa as we continue on with phase 10. Green Revisited. We're gonna go revisit the stand we sat last night because we saw an absolute stomper come out. He just came out a little bit dark. Yesterday was a cold front. He stayed on the beans. Tonight's warmer. Nope. Hopefully he'll do what all the other bucks did last night and come to the green. So we also, I admitted last night, we knocked a few deer off that plot when we got in there. And I just wonder if that didn't slow his approach down. Maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't, we don't know. But uh, we're gonna get in there a little bit earlier tonight. Make sure we don't knock any out of there. And we were early last night, we still did ran into him. So we'll see what happens. We're going in, green revisited. Phase four and phase 10, how's that sound? It's a good start, 225, same time. That's why you get in early, Perry. <laughs> well, we successfully got in about 25 minutes earlier than we did last night, and they walked out the same time they did last night. So hopefully that's a great start to our evening because all night long we were wondering whether pushing those deer back ran our shooter back in a little ways and he came out late. So whether it did or didn't, you never know, but at least tonight we feel like we got a clean slate. We'll see what happens. That's a great start, dude. Mm. Honey, looks nice right there. They're all gonna come up to this green, buddy. Booger when he grows up. Look at his rack. Look at that. For a year and a half old. Bring him on, bring him on. I was just making the comment. You take a year and a half, you never see one with a spread hardly. You take a deer like that a year and a half, what's he gonna turn into when he's mature? That deer could be two foot wide someday. Because you never see them express that at that age. Pretty, pretty unique deer right there. We've got great movement. They're already in the beans. Hopefully they make their way to the green and hopefully our target shows up a little bit earlier tonight than he did last night. This is green revisited, so we're hoping a bunch of them visit it. Our first one's about to, our second one's about to walk into it. Those early deer came to it as well. That's the normal path right there. Yeah, that one, right? Mm-hmm. Please, one. 
Yeah, some green and I. We got enough time that he should eat both, I would think. How far is that deer right there? 54. At the neck? Yes. Exit 
was dead center offside. Yeah, I think I saw blood coming. Yeah. I was sitting in the blind tonight, and Matt sent a group email today uh, about 1.35 to myself, Taylor, Terry, and he said, I, I had to go through our old website emails to delete a bunch to make some space, and randomly my eye caught this name as I was delete, deleting tens of thousands of emails. We get a lot, and this, this email dates back some, what, 14 years? He said, nice little note to remind you of our collective goal when it sometimes gets lost in the daily minutia. This is dated August the 15th of 2008 at 1.40 p.m. A gentleman by the name of Ralph Drury sent an email that said, you guys have done the Drury name proud. Ralph is from Carlsbad, California, which of course, that's not our father, Ralph, but the fact that Matt found that today and sent it in our group as a reminder of what a leader Ralph was to all of us, our dad. It just uh, gave me chills in the blind and I replied that to Matt, thank you for sharing that. I said, it gave me chills. And uh, I sat there in my mind, I thought, if I'm gonna kill this deer, it's tonight, because that's, that's an omen if I've ever seen one. An email that he randomly found from 2008 from a gentleman by the name of Ralph Drury from Carlsbad, California. Ralph, if you're, if you're out there, I appreciate you. Thank you for sending that some 14 years ago. We appreciate you. But if you don't believe in superstition or signs, well, it, uh, trust me they're out there and uh, if you're missing somebody right now that you've lost you're gonna see a sign at some point that was one that I had today well, that's still far boy <laughs> Looking dead right there, oh, wow. there. he didn't make it anywhere no kidding I mean the first time I ducked there he was Pretty cool, Congrats, boys. Sir. We got him. We'll put our hands on him. Let's go. Let's see. That's the way you want it right there. Let me get my tag out before we walk over. That's about as quick a recovery as you can have. He didn't go anywhere. No. What is today's day? 28. Yeah. Woo! Lordy, look at that. Oh my goodness. Gracious sakes alive. Look at that. Oh boy, oh my goodness. Ooh. That is an Iowa, Iowa whitetail right there. Oh my goodness. Ew. 
here we sit in southern Iowa on a 48 acre parcel of ground that just, I can't even believe I'm sitting behind this deer after the history we had with him last year. Here we are in phase 10, green revisited, and just behind this giant, enormous nine point um, that had us all scratching our heads. Such a homeboy last year on this farm, we had lots of pictures of him. And then this year, great summer pictures, then he disappears. Then about a week ago, he shows back up, but there's like an injury to his shoulder and his leg. And he showed up on that bean field. Get it out here. You could see, I remember I had one picture specifically where you could see that that shoulder almost looks dislocated and this will not bend with the injury there. So I'm not quite sure what happened to him, whether he got hit by a car or what. And um, I figured he might stay because this phase, this time of the year after the rut, they come back to food. And sometimes it's the ones that need a little help with help. And what happens, he walks out this evening and then comes from a hundred yards all the way into 15 to the scrape tree, just like uh, dad was watching over us. So thank you, Big Ralph, I appreciate it. But what an incredible adventure that ended here tonight. And granted he was injured, but boy, you saw after I shot, he had all of his wheels and he was out of there. So. I feel very thankful to be sitting behind him. Just a, a humbling way to uh, wrap that final tag here, or the final bow tag I have here in Iowa on an antler. Unbelievable, what an absolute Iowa specimen. Just incredible. So looking back on everything that occurred, here's a 50 acre farm that we had to make some adjustments on to get it tweaked. And I always say it takes two or three years to really learn a farm. The TSI, the thickness inside the woods is getting better and better. Uh, we've got the, the dirt up to optimum uh, fertilization and pH. We've had time to work on that. The hawk blind is in the right place. The reconics cameras tell us what's there and what isn't. And the, the cool thing about whitetails, you feel like you learn a lot and know a lot, and then they teach you something else. You know, um, I really was convinced this deer was dead or had moved. And in reality, he was just sitting on the sidelines nursing some injury that I'm still not sure what, what it was. We actually uh, sent it to, or a buddy sent it to a biologist and he felt like it was something neurological that occurred due to some sort of injury and he ended up lo losing muscle mass. And of course, obviously his, his front right leg had a, a huge softball size uh, growth in and around the joint that made that joint where you couldn't move it. So, like I said, they're the best teachers and we're constantly learning. And uh, I just feel very blessed that that deer ended up showing up during daylight and I was able to, to put that math used to work and, and make it count. Here we are getting to the latter stages of the season, but we've still got some heavy action coming at you. Forrest was able to kill the biggest deer of his life, an absolute giant that I've had multiple conversations with Terry and Forrest uh, with them about this particular deer. It was so nice to see Forrest put him down. And so here you have Terry killed the biggest deer of his life. Forrest killed the biggest deer of his life. And Perry had the best season he's ever had in his life. He killed three different deer that were six and a half or older, and then a five and a half down in Missouri. So all that action still to come in episodes 31, 32, and beyond. And we're gonna do something a little different this year. And I hope everybody stays with us out there. We're gonna continue deer season 22 on into 23 throughout the year. We've got several hunts that are gonna be edited after the season and brought to you on a weekly basis. So we appreciate everybody that's tuned in this year and a lot more action coming down the pipe. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Leupold.